SpaceX has asserted its dominance in the space industry with its ability to rapidly and efficiently reuse rockets. Each time a Falcon rocket tears through the sky, a spectacular scene unfolds. Brilliant shooting stars swiftly returning to Earth, landing on solid ground or on a drone ship in the ocean. These are the booster stages of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, coming back safely after completing their mission. This achievement stands like a shining beacon, overshadowing all the competition in the industry, even NASA, the renowned space agency of the U.S. Indeed, NASA can't achieve this. Their SLS rocket got embarrassed when compared to SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. NASA spends $2.6 billion annually to develop the SLS rocket and the ground launch system for the massive rocket at Kennedy Space Center. The SLS rocket was initially slated to launch in 2017, but its first flight was delayed until 2022. This is understandable. Most major aerospace rockets face delays. However, the cost of the five-year delay amounts to $13 billion. To argue, let's compare the cost of this five-year delay to the lift capacity that NASA could buy by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. That $13 billion equals 143 reusable Falcon Heavy launches or 85 expendable versions. This provides over 5,000 tons of lift capacity equivalent to 13 international space stations or a lunar base. Clearly, NASA doesn't need that many launches, but they could buy several Falcon Heavy rockets each year and still have enough money to build meaningful payloads to launch on them. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, as this is great motivation to keep us going each day. Keep coming back. All right. Although partial reuse is an incredible technical advancement, SpaceX has not yet recovered the entire Falcon rocket. They've achieved a similar capability, much faster and cheaper than NASA's space shuttle, but it still contradicts the classic airplane comparison. If you had to replace a large part of an airplane every time it landed, commercial air travel would be completely unfeasible. Therefore, further development is inevitable. By 2017, SpaceX had initiated the strategy of testing the recovery and reuse of payload fairings for both Falcon Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. It can be said that for many rocket companies, the fairing after launch is dead weight, so they don't waste time and money trying to recover it. However, SpaceX is different. In 2019, amid the fanfare of Falcon Heavy's second successful space journey, Elon announced that his company had, for the first time, managed to recover both halves of the Super Rockets fairing. In his tweet, Musk confirmed that both fairing halves were retrieved from the Atlantic Ocean undamaged. So far, SpaceX has reflown fairing halves more than 300 times, bringing numerous advantages to SpaceX's launch objectives and demonstrating their efforts to surpass the seemingly impossible limits of space. Initially, ferry recovery posed significant technical hurdles. These large clamshell-like structures protect payloads during ascent through Earth's atmosphere, but once they fulfilled their purposes, they become expendable debris, contributing to the high costs of space missions. SpaceX's early attempts at fairing recovery involved using ships equipped with large nets to catch the fairings as they descended under parachutes. However, the unpredictable nature of ocean landings and the difficulty of catching fairings midair led to mixed results. In response to these challenges, SpaceX pivoted its approach to fairing recovery, opting for a method that proved to be more reliable and cost-effective, allowing fairings to splash down in the ocean and then retrieving them. This approach, while seemingly less glamorous, offers greater predictability and reduces the risk of damage to sensitive equipment. Fairings are designed to be waterproof and undergo a thorough refurbishment process upon retrieval, including cleaning, inspection for damage, and component replacement as necessary. The cost effectiveness and reliability of fairing recovery are central to SpaceX's mission of driving down the cost of space access. With fairing representing a significant portion of launch costs, each fairing can cost around $6 million. SpaceX can save millions of dollars each launch, and they've refurbished fairing halves nearly 400 times on Falcon. Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, with some of them refurbed 11 times or more. Moreover, the reliability of fairing recovery contributes to mission success and customer confidence. When the company successfully recovers and refurbishes fairings, SpaceX demonstrates its ability to provide reliable and cost-effective launch services. This reliability is crucial for securing contracts from both government and commercial customers, solidifying SpaceX's position as a leader in the space launch market. However, that's just for the fairing. They're still part of the Falcon that hasn't been accounted for, and that's the second stage. Space enthusiasts might wonder why SpaceX hasn't attempted to recover the second stage of the rocket. 
Well, it's not hard to speculate that a company as curious and innovative as SpaceX has certainly thought about recovering the entire rocket, including the second stage. For many years, Elon's considered this idea, but it's never come to fruition. Unfortunately, as Musk confirmed in a tweet in 2018, the development of this new method was completely abandoned due to more urgent issues such as the development and testing of Starship. However, in reality, the technical challenges of bringing the second stage back to Earth intact are also one of the reasons. While the first stage is there to get the payload up, it could be said that the second stage is responsible for moving the payload sideways. The second stage is entirely focused on speed. For example, in a launch, it accelerated the payload from 8,019 kilometers an hour at a separation to the 26,960 kilometers an hour needed to maintain low Earth orbit in just a few minutes. Once the payload separates and continues on its mission, the second stage is its own spacecraft moving at orbital speed and altitude. Bringing it down to a gentle landing on Earth, therefore, has all the same challenges of landing any other spacecraft, except for the fact that the second stage has none of the hardware that would traditionally be necessary to pull off such a feat. It's a bit like trying to land an airplane without landing gear or wings. So, why not add the necessary components to help it land, like parachutes or a heat shield, similar to how a Dragon spacecraft comes back to Earth? We could equip it with a heat shield, but parachutes are a poor choice. They're heavy, they're imprecise and impractical, as the second stage would get damaged when landing on solid ground. Parachutes could be used to land in the ocean, but seawater is very corrosive, so a water landing could also damage the stage. With parachutes ruled out, the only conceivable option is to perform a propulsive landing similar to how the first stage gets recovered. At first glance, this is exactly the technique that SpaceX has mastered with their boosters, so it should be a breeze, right? Not quite. In early concept videos from SpaceX, the second stage was shown outfitted with a heat shield, landing legs, and even a retractable engine nozzle. All these features would have worked together to make the stage capable of the same autonomous propulsive landings the first stage performs. But the problem with this super second stage is weight. Adding a recovery system would significantly increase the weight of the second stage, thereby reducing the rocket's payload capacity. Every kilogram of recovery gear added to the second stage is one less kilo of payload delivered to space, not to mention the additional fuel required for landing. For a commercial launch provider like SpaceX, that is a problem. Furthermore, not every mission has enough fuel left over to perform deorbit maneuvers necessary for recovery. Economically, the cost of developing the new technology with a performance loss might outweigh the benefits of reusing the second stage. Currently, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are still operating frequently, and the company always recovers the first stage in fairing for reuse. However, in the future, as Starship becomes increasingly robust, the Falcon rocket line will quickly become obsolete. At its core, Starship embodies SpaceX's vision of creating a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying out a diverse range of missions, from lunar and Mars exploration to interplanetary travel and satellite deployment. The centerpiece of Starship's revolutionary design is its full reusability, unlike the partial reusability of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, and entirely opposite to traditional spacecraft models. A key component of Starship's reusability is its innovative propulsion system, powered by methane-based Raptor engines. Unlike traditional rocket engines, which typically use liquid oxygen and a hydrocarbon fuel like kerosene, Raptor engines utilize methane as fuel, and that offers several advantages. Methane is abundant and can potentially be synthesized from resources available on other celestial bodies, like Mars. Additionally, methane combustion produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions compared to traditional rocket fuels, making it more environmentally friendly for space travel. The Raptor engines also feature a revolutionary engine cycle known as full-float stage combustion, which maximizes efficiency and performance. In this complex process, both the fuel and the oxidizer are fully gasified before being combusted in the engine, allowing for greater thrust and propellant efficiency compared to traditional rocket engines. This innovative engine design represents a significant step forward in rocket propulsion technology and serves as a cornerstone of Starship's capabilities. Once Starship enters regular service, the future of space exploration has never looked more promising. However, regardless of the promising future, achieving this will require a considerable amount of time. So SpaceX needs to develop two rocket programs in parallel. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.